Here are the most recent develop developments in what I am calling World War Chicken right now, being played between the United States, Russia, China, and North Korea. Don't mess with us. North Korea threatens to turn the U.S. to ashes with super mighty preemptive strike. That's right. Kim Jong-un is warning the U.S. He's ready to want, uh, launch a super mighty preemptive strike. Super mighty are the adjectives that he decides to use there. There you can see. Actually, this is a video from them staging an event with a video that had a missile blowing up the United States, and then they all cheer. Now, Mighty Mouse, Kim Jong-un, with his super mighty missile strike. Yeah, there's the video that I'm referring to. Kim Jong-un is now threatening the U.S. with a super mighty missile strike the day after Mighty Mouse plays that video at a North Korean ceremony. Now, Trump is saying that China is on his side with this issue. Trump praises Chinese efforts on North Korea menace. And this is, of course, on the eve of North Korea warning of the strike. So there's been some developments between the United States, Donald Trump, and China, and the president of China. President Xi comes to town. They have a great meeting. Everybody's heard about the beautiful chocolate cake. Trump changes. He takes a pivot on the currency rig rigging rhetoric, but now seems to be getting his way as far as China and their handling of North Korea. Was that perhaps brinkmanship the entire time? But it does like, look like China is not going to back down from North Korea. We'll get into that more in a second. But now the latest news is that North Korea is also advancing their submarine missile program. North Korea is making rapid progress on developing submarine-launched ballistic missiles and missile-firing-range submarines. So this is according to the United Nations. So perhaps there's a worry there about North Korea's advancing technology and the United States and China want to get out ahead of it. There was that odd flight path by a naval air vessel uh, out on the coast of California. They never really let us know what that was about. Could they have found a strange submarine in the area? Could it just have been tests? I don't know. We know war games are going on. Uh, but according to the UN, North Korea is advancing their submarine missile program, stealth warfare. Could this be why the United States sends nuclear sniffer plane to Korea? Uh, apparently, the United Air Force has now dispatched a nuclear sniffer aircraft to the Korean Peninsula amid the possibility of North Korea's imminent nuclear test. Well, they've been testing nukes um, allegedly successfully. Of course, allegedly one blew up as well. And they claim they're going to do this weekly. The United States has said stop. Apparently, they're advancing now their uh, submarine program. So the United States is now sending a nuclear sniffer plane over there, I guess, to monitor whatever activity Kim Jong-un is actually up to. Now, here's a story from The Guardian, and this is where you question whether this is actually going to come to America, come to your backyard, or not. North Korea nuclear threat, should California be panicking? As rhetoric between North Korea and the United States ratchets up, should major cities on West Coast be worried about a missile strike? Experts say the answer is tricky. Well, I know I wouldn't want to live in California, and that's not been because of the threat of a North Korea missile, but perhaps that might add to the reasons not to want to live there anymore. Maxine Waters, Nancy Pelosi, the worst taxes, earthquakes, et cetera, et cetera, Hollywood. But for real, people in California, for the most part, probably aren't too concerned about this. They haven't been too concerned about Fukushima that has been leaking nuclear waste in their direction for, wow, it's been a long time now, over five years. So will they be concerned about North Korea's nuclear testing? Now, the interesting thing about this to me is, so these are all these war games going on. Is, is this real? Is this a real threat? I mean, are we really staring in the face of World War III right now? And all of these, I'm not sure if that's the North Korean military. I think that's actually the Chinese military that we have on the screen right now. But, you know, they want to do, they do uh, all of these 
drills where they have thousands of people marching in the street with the North Korean leader there saluting and waving to everybody. They have these big missiles that they truck out through the street that are probably fake. They're not even real. Is that how out of touch with reality Kim Jong-un and these people really are? I feel bad for the oppressed people of the North Korean regime, but is that how out of touch with reality that they are? They have cardboard signs. They have all of these elaborate displays that are 50 years past. Nobody has crazy displays like that every year, except as far as I'm concerned, North Korea and perhaps China as well. Um, however, I don't think China is bluffing. I don't think China marches fake weaponry out during these marches. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But should California start panicking? Is this a real issue for California? They don't care about Fukushima. Would they care about World War III? I'm not too sure about that. These are the same people that elect Nancy Pelosi and Maxine Waters over and over again. But here you go again with China looking like they're cooperating with the United States. United States official with eye on North Korea, China puts bombers on high alert. So it's not just the United States that is considering aircraft in the area or that has aircraft in the area. China is also putting their bombers on high alert. These are serious war games going on. So what have we covered? United States war games, North Korean war games, Chinese war games. It just goes on and on and on. And the question that remains is, who is China going to side with? They've been very tolerant of the North Korean regime, the North Korean communist dictatorship for a long time. The United States has said, we're not going to be tolerant anymore, and they want to work with China to do something about it. Now, China already rejected a coal shipment from North Korea. This was right on the heels of President Xi and President Trump meeting. Now Beijing may cut oil to North Korea. This is according to a Chinese export. So China turns the screw on North Korea to prevent another nuclear test. So China now not doing coal deals. Are they not going to be doing oil deals as well? Is this another sign along with the aircraft that are on high alert, the coal and now the oil? Are these all signs that Trump's brinkman brinksmanship with Chinese uh, President Xi has worked to his favor and that now he can get them to work with him on North Korea? Yes, this is a story from Forbes. Is China really abandoning North Korea? Many people say it's China that has been the, how would you say it, country that has allowed North Korea to get to the point where it's at. China is right there. China is the superpower of that region. And North Korea has just been able to operate freely. Uh, Kim Jong-un, the dictatorship, maybe finally it looks like China is going to do something about it because Donald Trump said, I want to do something about it. And in order to make deals with you in the future, I'd like to make a deal right now with North Korea. And it appears as though that might be going on. But of course, folks, uh, it is still early. More war games from China. China tests missiles on deadly new destroyer ship near North Korea as it warns it's getting troops battle ready. Well, that's right. China has already sent 100,000 troops to the border. I think that number was 100,000. China sends 100,000 troops to the border. Border. China rejects North Korea's coal. China says we're not going to do oil deals with North Korea anymore. Now they're testing missiles on a destroyer ship that is near North Korea and has troops battle ready. Battle ready for what? To take down the North Korean dictator or to defend the North Korean dictator? I guess that's the question. But right now I would say that signs point to China working with the United States to end the communist regime in North Korea. So again, more war games here from China as they're testing missiles and getting troops ready. Russia, and here comes Russia to enter the picture. Russia moves troops, helicopters, and armored vehicles to its border with North Korea as Putin braces for war. Footage allegedly shows a mass military mobilization about 11 miles from its border with North Korea. Now they've been doing this on their border, which would be close to Alaska as well. But again, so now you've got China putting pressure on North Korea, and you also have Russia putting pressure on North Korea. Now, this is interesting considering right now, I don't think the United States and Russia are getting along. Of course, this is according to uh, Trump and Tillerson. 
But could they maybe find equal ground or common ground in the desire to remove the oppressive dictator Kim Jong-un from power in North Korea? So maybe Russia looks past Syria for now. Maybe there was brinksmanship in Syria. Maybe it was just a test for something more. But it does look like even Russia is getting involved into the war games uh, with the United States, China, and North Korea. Now, taking things to another level, Russia claims it can wipe out entire U.S. Navy with a single electronic bomb in bizarre propaganda report. Russian news report claims the electronic signal jamming weapon can render plane, ships, and missiles useless. Of course, this is state-funded media out of Russia. You can choose whether to trust it or not. But they claim that with this new technology, they can just take down a plane, take out a ship, and any of the United States advanced weaponry that might be on those types of uh, crafts, whether it be on the sea or in the air, would be rendered useless. Of course, it was a big problem at one time, uh, our electric grid and the threat of an EMP strike, but that seems to have entered the back burner. But I wonder how much veracity they actually take this claim that Russia has an electronic bomb that can take out a United States uh, Air Force, you know, battalion or a, a Navy ship or anything like that. I wonder if they take that seriously, if that's Russia bluffing. I'm not sure. Here we go again, though. More out of Russia. Russian bombers again fly near Alaska for the second consecutive night. Russia flew two long-range bombers off the coast of Alaska, and they were within 36 miles of the mainland. And these were two nuclear-capable Tu-95 bombers, and they were spotted by U.S. military. Um, so more war games coming out of Russia. And again, this is just all building up to World War III for me. I feel like they wouldn't be doing these war games to such a serious capacity if there wasn't a serious threat of war breaking out or unless there are serious plans to either invade North Korea or to do something intervention uh, interventionist in the Middle East. I'm not sure what's going on, folks. I'm just trying to figure it all out. And we can see the war games being played in front of us. And all signs point to war when you see this stuff going on. It's impossible to sit here and try to report that with a straight face when it's such uh, dire news to report, but that does appear what's going on. But what is the UN saying? The UN is saying it would be accidental, risk of accidental nuclear war growing, according to the UN. And they're trying to make this claim that basically because of the, all these nuclear arsenals, because of the threat of nuclear war, because everybody is sitting on their heels worried about it right now, that that is what could lead to nuclear war, either a, a missed report uh, via some cyber hack or this, that, or the other thing, somebody being confused about maybe this was launched, maybe it wasn't, and then nuclear war gets launched accidentally, according to the UN. Apparently, everybody is so scared right now. That's why I'm calling it war chicken. It's war chicken that's going on right now. But, of course, Bill Gates, he's ready, folks. Bill Gates says terrorists could wipe out 30 million people by weaponizing a disease such as smallpox. <laughs> Hold that picture right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just ask, what kind of a terrorist, in fact, let's not even use the word terrorist, what human being, what individual would have the capacity to actually make or weaponize a disease? What kind of a, what kind of a tech genius or tech mogul or someone who has a technology in everybody's homes, who would have that capability? Who would have the capability to wipe out 30 million people with some hyper-advanced um, weapon, weaponized disease. I don't know, Bill Gates. I have no idea, Bill Gates. Who would have that capability? We'll be right back. Welcome, everybody. This is Wardo Rance. There's no way of verifying this at this point, but this is about uh, painting U.S. planes in uh, Russian colors. Uh, I would say that it's something that people better keep a good uh, eye out for because uh, uh, dirty tricks uh, will continue and uh, anything to get this war going. That's what the bankers are set to do. The, uh, the stories on the Internet recently about American opposing force aircraft, these were Marine F-18s being uh, painted in the Russian colors, uh, and the potential of them being used for false flag attacks in Syria. Uh, ZT looked at that story uh, a while ago in Greenhog 
one of our military editors examined it. We weren't able to run the story. We couldn't find any verification that the F-18s had been used in the Middle East. On the other hand, we do have reason to believe that others have done the same thing. We believe that either Israeli F-15s or other planes being flown out of Turkey have attacked Syria and have done this in false flag attacks. We believe the likelihood of that is extremely high. The Russians on two or more occasions have brought up that uh, bombing attacks the U.S. has uh, referred to as war crimes. Uh, Russia was very clear about not having planes in the area. Uh, sometimes these things may be artillery, sometimes they're bombing, but and the other thing we have to look at is this story itself and some of the people who have carried it. Uh, whenever there's a story like this and a photo like this comes out, uh, it can be an accident, sometimes it's not. But what I think we need to accept, we need to accept that putting a little paint on an airplane is pretty easy and that the Russians just recently moved new air defenses in and increase their radar coverage. And this kind of attack is quite likely one of the reasons the Russians have done that. We know that Israel has a history of false flags. They've been caught already attacking uh, Syria. So the thing that you should be looking out for is uh, where they're coming in from Turkey and whatnot. People keep an eye out for uh, any of this information. So you guys follow me on Facebook, Water Rants, also waterrants.com. And uh, also on Twitter. Uh, anyway, Wado out.